Oh, my nails match my shirt. That's cute and unplanned. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another magical video. My hair is drying kind of weird, so we're just gonna enjoy that together. So we're creeping up on the anniversary of pandemic living, and I was sitting here thinking, what was I doing last winter? And the thing that jumped into my mind first was... I saw Cats twice in theaters. And while we can't prove it, I do think the release of Cats was the downfall of humanity. So anyway, I was thinking about Cats and I was thinking about how much people hated Cats and that made me think of movie musicals and why are movie musicals so bad lately? And when I say bad, I mean ill-received. And when I say ill-received, I mean they cast someone who everyone looks at the cast list and goes, okay, Okay, all right, yeah, sure, why? What? And we are just left to wait, wait for whatever creation is about to be unleashed upon us. And the ones that come to mind that made the most impact are Fan of the Opera, Cats, and Les Mis. So I was just chilling. I have half a bottle of wine. I got nothing else to do. Sorry. What if we read some Amazon reviews of people who have rented and or bought the movie since it came out? Now, I looked through like hundreds, hundreds of these reviews. There seems to be kind of like a Venn diagram of the kind of people who would leave a review. The rejected New York Times critic who summarizes the entire movie for you, your aunt from Iowa. And then the last one is they had no idea what they were getting into. So these are our three categories and most people are a combination of a couple of these. And then there are those rare beautiful few who are all three. So let's start with cats because we're gonna go backwards in time. So this is called one of the best horror films in years. I highly recommend cats to anyone who appreciates existential horror in films that make you question life in the universe. You will not be the same person after you finish watching cats. It can never be unseen and the feelings of doubt it leaves you with are not to be underestimated. I am still not sure if I'm alive right now or if I had a massive stroke in the theater and died. Is hell a life in which one has seen cats and forever is cursed with the memories of the bizarre sexual undulations ingrained in your memories? A movie so fundamentally broken that they had to rush an improved version out to theaters after spending a hundred million dollars to make it. Watch this movie with the knowledge that more money went into this than you will ever see in your entire life. Then you will know true despair. 704 people found this helpful. When I went in to read the cat's comments, I said to myself I would only screenshot some of those that said like an actual positive thing because I just really want to know who those people are. But this was the top one and it's just such a chef's kiss masterpiece, I just had to include it. On to the important stuff, the people who actually liked cats. Now, taste is a really funny thing, and especially when it comes to these movie musicals. When all these bad reviews were coming out, not just about cats, but of Phantom and Les Mis, there were a lot of people who actually liked the performances that were being critiqued so heavily, and they rose in defense to say that Russell Crowe in Les Mis, sure, he's not a trained singer, but he does an awesome job, and you know what, all you critics can go fuck yourselves, you're all just too snobby. And so because of that, you get this kind of weird war between the fans, the consumers, and the critics. And I mean, this is a tale as old as time. There are so many movies that critics totally hated, but fans totally loved, and really in the end, it's the fans' opinion that matter. It's the fans who are buying the tickets and buying the DVDs and the CDs and whatever. So I was looking for those kinds of people in the Cats comment section. And me wow, two paws up. Cats 2019 is the best film of all time, pause down. Pause up, pause down. Both. Tom Hooper already showed he can master Broadway musicals on screen with Les Mis. So I'm glad he was given the pick of the litter that led him to direct this cat's piece. <laughs> you guys, this just keeps going. Ian McKellen must have been studying cats before this film, much like Andy Serkis studied apes for King Kong in Planet of the Apes, as he acts exactly like one. It's uncanny. Now for the real treat, the CGI, which must stand for cats gorgeously identical because they really made the people look just like cats. Just like them. You know, I don't own a cat, but when I walk down the street, 
and I see a cat like run across the road like to a house, I am so often taken aback because I every time I say to myself, is that was that Idris Elba? Uncanny. Uncatty. <gasps> I'm doing it. <laughs> that was a catastrophe. I give that a paw up and a paw down in accordance with your rating system. Okay, so in this one, this person actually thinks it's the most amazing thing. Now, what is kind of fun is even though it is called in all caps, AMAZING MOVIE MUSICAL, it is still only four stars. <laughs> I don't know why. This is a very positive review here. This was an absolutely beautiful film. Don't listen to the naysayers. Just go and judge for yourself. So this is a good example of what I was talking about, right? Where it's a, it's this person waging a war against their personal taste and like the critical... What's the opposite of a claim? On a claim. Unfortunately, the negative power of social media obviously resulted in people allowing themselves to hop aboard the very popular trend of it's really cool to hate something simply because everyone hates it train. Do you think he just got muted? Because those notes are like, oh. <laughs> This one uh, pulls a, a nice bait and switch a Rooney since it starts with complete and utter rubbish, not the film all the negative reviews about the film. <laughs> Poe, you got me, man. And I mean, Suzanne says it's beauty, it's five stars, and that the only people who hate this movie are the ones who have a stone where a heart should be. Georgette, five stars, terrific movie ruined by ignorant people and snobby critics. Maybe the true existential horror of post-cats viewing is being locked in an Amazon comment thread where Georgette and Suzanne tell me that I'm heartless. Uh, so before that happens, I think we should move on. Les Mis did pretty well when it was released. It got Oscar nominations and, and Hathaway won. The big sell of it was that they were singing live on set, which like, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy since most production days are like 11 hours. So the final result of the movie, a lot of the singing sounds tired, but it it was, you know, it was a take down Russell Crowe fest. That's like what everyone kind of jumped on that train. My opinion about Russell Crowe being cast is Honestly, if you look at his body of acting work, I get why they thought, oh, we need a scary obsessive cop. How about Russell Crowe? But the problem is, is that Russell Crowe, there is a singer in there, but not for this genre. If Les Mis were a more traditional musical in which there was talking and singing and not just straight up singing the whole time, I would probably get behind Russell Crowe being cast a little more, but because the communication of Les Mis is to be sung the whole time, I just feel like they could have picked someone else who was a little more comfortable expressing themselves that way. Because honestly, Russell Crowe just kind of looks kind of dead in the eyes the whole time. Like maybe he's probably just really thinking about what he's hearing in his little earpiece to try to stay on beat. And so because of this, honestly, a ton of these reviews were people just making fun of Russell Crowe. Russell, I do love you and I, I love Gladiator. Big, huge, huge, huge fan. This review has kind of an ominous title to it. It is five stars, but it's entitled, It Brought Me to Tears Completely Against My Will, which doesn't, it's not great. It seems like in some of these, it's like in some people, there's been like a creative writer buried within them from like high school English class and it only is unleashed twice a year when they come to write an Amazon review. The story is so strong, the emotions are aroused. I cannot give it anything less than the best. At the end, my spirit soared and the tears fell. Like, I don't know, just say you cried. But then we leave the poetry of the first line. We jump down to this one, which was, I was determined not to like this gavroche as I preferred some of the chubbier ones on Broadway in London. <laughs> but this little guy sang so well and it charmed me right in. <laughs> yeah, if kids aren't chubby, get them out of my face. If a little chubster isn't dying in front of that barricade, I don't want it. So this was one of my favorite ones that I found because as I described in the Venn diagram of the kind of people who leave Amazon reviews, one of the sections is they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about or what they're doing here. And this is one of the best examples of that. Singing the whole script? I'm only 50 minutes into this and already I hate it. I knew going into this that this version was a musical. I like musicals and I like the cast selected to portray these rich characters, but I wasn't expecting the entire story to be set to song. Very overdone. So they didn't know about Les Mis? 
but they like musicals? I don't even know how you do that. I don't know how you missed that one. I mean, when I saw Les Mis, I went in as a musician ready to watch a musical. I've been in this musical. So like, I knew everything I was supposed to expect. I cannot imagine the confusion of expecting to watch a movie not knowing the whole thing is like a three and a half hour long musical borderline opera. That must have been really stressful. So I'm sorry, guy. All right, you guys. So we've been through Cats, we've been through Les Mis. I have saved my absolute favorite for last. So Joel Schumacher's Phantom of the Opera came out in 2004 and I was like in fourth or fifth grade at the time or something. So I was a baby, I wasn't allowed to see it until years later because like there are some scary moments, there's murder, you know, he hangs a couple people. And you know, when the Phantom pulls off his mask, like I was always worried that would be really scary even though now it just kind of looks like he was lying on one side in the sun for too long. So this movie has become one of my all-time favorite Hecklevision kind of movies to watch with a bottle of wine and a drinking game. Like, where do you even start? Do you start with Gerard Butler basically scream singing his way through music that's way too high for him? Emmy Rossum was like 16 when they were shooting this, which is so weird because like Gerard Butler was like super not 16 and neither was Patrick Wilson. And especially because vocally she sounds 16. She looks beautiful, but her voice is just not anywhere near strong enough to carry off what she was expected to do. There's some really good moments, there's some really bad moments, but all in all, it's a super fun movie that I love to watch over and over again. And what I will say is while I believe this movie to be supremely miscast, I do think that the people in it are doing the best with what they were given, and I admire that. So good job, guys. So let's just get right into it. I was moved beyond tears by Gerard Butler's performance and I refuse to deny it. I was moved beyond tears to downright sobbing by Gerard Butler's effective portrayal of the Phantom. And when he sings Music of the Night, I could feel each note he sang tingling up and down my spine in tandem, tantalizing ecstasy. <laughs> Do you guys remember what I said about that whole creative writing gene that comes out only in the Amazon comments? Like, what's up with that? <laughs> Move over, Christine. Leave and be on your way. Quickly. I'd be more than willing to step in and take your place with this phantom. Anyone that can sing like him can't be all bad. I'd risk it. <laughs> this commenter is a top contributor to the scrapbooking section. Now look, I'm not trying to generalize here, but this, this is your aunt from Iowa. I knew it. She's here. She's among us. Nay, she is all of us in this moment. Romance and music and Gerard Butler. What could be bad? Let's start with Gerard Butler, who is gorgeous, mesmerizing, sensual, tantalizing, any thinking woman's fantasy lover. And he can sing too. Okay, take a deep breath. Never having seen him before, he was a revelation. The way he uses his voice and body language is a subtle seduction that stays with you long after the movie is over. And he makes the unmasked phantom as sexy as the mysterious masked and caped eggshell of music. <laughs> yeah, big ol' bee sting on the side of his face is super tantalizing. His raw intensity and tragic longing is sensational. My husband says he's buying a cape. Like that's all it would take? Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> that poor man. <laughs> Imagine coming home to your wife and she sits you down and goes, Look, honey. I love Gerard Butler, I will love him forever, he's way, way hot, and you say, I can work with this, I'll go buy a cape, and then I'll be your phantom. And she just goes, oh, sweetheart. <laughs> also, later in this review, she refers to flamingo dancers. That, that's all. Having a girl's night in with your best friends and a couple bottles of wine and let Gerard Butler sing songs in your head. Any woman of any age who doesn't emit a moan during his wildly seductive music of the night needs serious help. <laughs> Ladies, are you not moaning publicly during your girls' nights as much as you want to? Are you looking around and thinking we need some capes to spice up this evening? Well, if I got a movie for you and if it doesn't work, it turns out you need serious help. <laughs> So this review is, in my opinion, the very best because this person is another one of those who clearly had no idea what they were getting themselves into when they first ordered this movie. They, I don't think they knew what Phantom of the Opera was. They say in the review that they saw that Gerard Butler was the Phantom and they didn't want to pass up seeing Leonidas singing, which I have to say would have made 300 like 20 times better. 
Spartans! Ready your breakfast and eat hearty. But tonight, we dine in hell! But so throughout, they seem to only remember two characters in the entire story. They got the Phantom, they got Christine, and then they got one more whose name they can't remember, so they just call him the boy. At first, I was rooting for the Phantom. He had gone out of his way to coach this girl and wanted to make her a star. So when this rich boy comes along and only notices Christine after she has the lead role, the role the Phantom helped her get, I was a bit skeptical of the boy. <laughs> but when the Phantom kills one of the stage crew for no real reason, that's when my opinion of him started to change. That's when the opinion started to change. Not like the other weird shit the Phantom does in the whole beginning of the movie. Not the Carlotta stuff. Not like the drag the miner down to his lair in the basement. None of that. It broke my heart though when Christine was with the rich boy on the roof telling him how ugly the Phantom was and how she couldn't imagine a life with him. At that point, I didn't think much of Christine, felt sorry for the Phantom, and continued to dislike the rich boy. <laughs> So this person continues to summarize the entire movie while still calling Raul the rich boy the whole time. And then we get to the last paragraph, which is just... The scene in the Phantom's lair, when the Phantom is overcome with possessive jealousy, forcing poor Christine to be at his side when her heart clearly belongs to the rich boy, it was heartbreaking. The Phantom's slip into madness was an understandable... For all you viewers at home, uh, please raise your hand if you think that the Phantom of the Opera could be described with any of these adjectives. Understandable? That's it. The Phantom slip into madness was an understandable, but scary change. And when the Phantom makes her choose a life with him or a world without her rich boy, it was tragic. Realizing that he had become in the eyes of the woman he loved, the Phantom relents and lets them go. And when Christine goes to say her goodbye to the Phantom, it makes for the saddest scene of the entire film for me. He had so much love for her, and when he broke down and reveals his true self, she just leaves. She just leaves with her rich boy. My goodness, it was sad. <laughs> So you guys, I hope you liked this video. I just thought it would be fun to go through the weird shit on the internet because when is that ever not fun? If you're a person out there about to leave an Amazon review, I want you to ask yourself, is it necessary? Is the summary already in the description of the movie you're renting? And then I need you to also find out what the characters' names are so that you don't end up with Phantom Christine and the Rich Boy, which would be a really good band name. I can't believe I didn't drink wine once during this. For the people who left these comments, thank you for every beautiful thing you have ever done in your life, but this being the most important thing. Also, I highly recommend watching any of these movie musicals if you guys are looking for a girls' night where you audibly moan at each other. Or maybe you should probably just watch 300.